close-up look at all your Conjo Valley High School football. This is Inside the Game. Sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group. Good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to KSAN's Inside the Game. I'm Griff McClellan. It's hard to believe we're wrapping up week six of the 2024 Contra Valley High School football season. But, of course, we have no shortage of content once again. So without further ado, let's dive right in, starting with the Wall Hawks, who came home tonight hosting the Idaloo Wildcats. Both teams enter this matchup 4-1, Idaloo winners of the last two meetings. Hawks with the ball to start, first drive moving down the field and would end with a corner strike from Landon York to Robertson, 7-0 wall to start this game. Idaloo with the ball this drive looking to answer, screen pass to Jensen Davis, Idaloo ties it 7-0 in the first. A few drives later, Wall with the power run into the end zone to extend the lead 14-7 as Wall punches it across right there. Once again, Wall with the ball, again, another short yard score, 21-7 now. Minutes left before half, another into a a new field goal, and the Hawks will connect here for a monster touchdown to go up 27 to 10 after a Hawks interception. And then next, turnover the next play. Idaloo had one final chance to get points before half, but come up short. 27 to 10 at halftime, 33 10 at last check in the fourth quarter. We're now going to send it out to Brian Cunningham, who is live at Clayton Wise Student Field for tonight's post game analysis. Take it away, Brian. Good evening from Clayton Wysoon Field. I'm Brian Cunningham, and the fans here tonight were treated to an absolute beautiful game ahead of homecoming night. The Hawks entered this game 4-1 on the season, and they had the Idaloo Wildcats come into town also 4-1 now. We did see Idaloo the last two seasons beat Wall in that series. They are now 1-2 all-time against Idaloo, but tonight was a little bit different. The Hawks went into this game, and they were looking to have a complete game, I should say. They didn't want to be a first-half team. They didn't want to be a second-half team. And unfortunately, they did get the W tonight, but that was still the case. They were a first-half team that got out right ahead, right quickly, 7-0 on the board. They then had Idaloo tie the game 7-7. And from there, the Wallhawks ended up cruising on to a victory. They walked away with the win 33-10. But here's the crazy part about this game. The Hawks turned the ball over six times to Ida lose three. So it was a completely different ball game from both these teams ahead of here on homecoming night. But thankfully, the Wallhawks were able to walk away with the win. That is all from Clayton Wysoon Field. Brian Cunningham, back to you guys. This live shot is sponsored by AFCO Steel. Thanks, Brian. In addition to that, the Wallhawks entered Friday night on a three-game winning streak. But that streak is one of a kind. It was pretty unique to say. I had a chance to catch up with head coach Craig Slaughter and some senior athletes earlier this week leading up to week six. September was a roller coaster month for the Wall Hawks. After the Brownwood Lions spoiled Hawks head coach Craig Slaughter's home debut in week two, his team began a three game winning streak. But none of those wins came easily. While each game produced a different result, there was one common denominator, a tale of two halves. We caught up with Slaughter, who had this to say after his team's comeback win over Sweetwater in Week 5. You know, I thought the kids uh, really responded. You know, we had it kind of flipped to us a couple of times the past couple of weeks where we had to, you know, hang on, and it was nice to, to us get down. I mean, I'd rather not get down, you know, but I, I definitely love the response. I mean, 36 unanswered points against a quality team, uh, that was impressive. I thought the kids played great. In week five, the Hawks came back from a 21-6 deficit, but responded with 36 unanswered points en route to a 42-21 win. The previous two weeks, different story. The Hawks held double-digit leads against Jim Ned and Monahans in weeks three and four, respectively, but nearly blew those leads in the second half. Uh, our coaches have been using this term this whole season, a snowball rolling down a hill, picking up steam, and I think we're finally figuring ourselves out. And I think we'll be unstoppable soon and just a force. Through all the drama, the team always found ways to adjust and come out on top. We must never give up. Yes, we came down, but we've always battled through everything. Through adversity, it always came back. If there's anything the Hawks have gained through this process, it's only strengthened team chemistry. I really think we have a good chemistry, and whenever we come out on, like, whenever we're behind, we go to each other, and we just make sure that we're going to do the best that we can. The team chemistry, I think, is, uh, is at an all-time high. I mean, this team, the, the chemistry we have, the, the brotherhood, I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, nobody's over anybody. It's a family. Everybody's having a great time. I mean, I think that's what really is the biggest impact we have on the games is our ability to play together. 
Now moving on to Lakeview's matchup tonight on the road for the third straight week facing Burnett. These teams meeting for the first time ever. Lakeview coming in at 1-4 looking to end a two-game losing streak on the road. Burnett after an 0-2 start pulling off three in a row but in the end it was Burnett coming away with the likely win as of now score 49-14 in the fourth quarter at last check. TLCA San Angelo and Grape Creek have established a decent rivalry for, rivalry for nearly a decade. These teams going head-to-head -head for the ninth straight year. Grape Creek celebrating its homecoming. Fans, band loving every minute of it. Grape Creek off to a fast start already, up 12-0 in the first quarter. But they were far from done. Here goes Lane Klusner on an end-around two-point conversion. Good, 20-0 Grape Creek. Still in the first, 146 to go. Braley Woods drops back and finds, guess who? Klusner again, 28-0 now. The route is on. TLC trying to make something happen, but a high snap is fumbled. Josiah Huddleston can't corral it, and the Grape Creek Eagles are back in business. Grape Creek trying to capitalize on good field position, and they do just that. Anthony Saavedra trots into the end zone, evading tackles, 34-0 in favor of the home team. What a way to celebrate homecoming weekend. It was all Grape Creek tonight, sending the fans home happy with a dominant 74-0 win. We're now going to take a quick break, but remember, don't go anywhere because we still have lots of exciting content ahead. Stick around for more Country Valley football coverage. We'll be back. Okay, guys, name a mistake you see homeowners make. Oh. They leave the thermostat up high during the day, thinking it cuts down their electric bill. That is a mistake. It just makes the unit work harder and your home uncomfortable for the hours it will take to catch up and most likely will make your utility bills higher. Keeping a clean filter and properly maintaining your unit will do more for your electric bill than anything else. Like with our unlimited air, worry-free maintenance plan. It's all about the service. It's been five amazing years since we opened our doors here in San Angelo. From the very start, we've been fortunate to call this community our home. Thank you to our loyal customers, our amazing team, friends, and family, and everyone who's helped us get to where we are today. Our commitment to exceptional customer service continues to be what we strive to do for anyone who walks through our doors. Here's to five amazing years in San Angelo and many more to come. Quality Carpet and Tile, San Angelo's trusted flooring experts. A Carriel is a small leather satchel originally from Colombia. It was used by mule drivers to carry essential items on their journey across the Andes Mountains. Traditionally made of rawhide or nutria fur, a cousin of the beaver, the Carriel's accordion design allows for numerous compartments. Celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month with a look at the diversity and wonder of this vibrant community. Everyone, welcome back to Inside the Game. Let's resume our coverage with a look at the Junction Eagles, who entered Week Six on a mission after its bye week. Head coach Scott Freeman and his team are feeling recharged and ready to bounce back after falling to Mason two weeks ago. Junction's greatest advantage this season has been its full starting lineup of returning players, which gives the team an edge and experience come district play. Despite a 35-12 loss to Mason two weeks ago, the Eagles' mindset has not changed at all. Coach Freeman says his players didn't dwell on that loss, but used the bye week to reset both mentally and physically. Going into Friday's matchup versus Rock Springs. You're good. Well, I think we have to execute. That's number one thing. I think if you look at the loss we had, execution uh, at times just wasn't there, you know? And so um, that's the one thing, start fast. You know, the first drive, let's go out there and let's let's do what we do. You know, let's be a physical running football team. Uh, when we have to make passes, let's make them. Let's get everything uh and defensively, get everything on the right path, you know, as far as getting line, getting uh, getting our calls in. Junction held the all-time series lead over Rock Springs 21-9-5 hanging in this night, but hadn't defeated them since 2009 after dropping the last two meetings in 2020 and 2021. Tonight's result, Junction re-enters the win column after its bye week. Final score, 76-0 Eagles. What a way for Junction to bounce back with a commanding blowout win. We're now going to send it to a break, but stay tuned. We have plenty of six-man coverage coming up next. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. Dave here from the Home Zone Factory. Bree here, founder of Home Zone. We'd love to build a sofa just for you right here at our Texas factory. And because we build it here in Dallas, you can even pick out your own fabric at no additional cost. Make it yours. We have dozens of styles to choose from. 
Built right here in Texas, for Texans, by Texans. Ponzo. We're different. We're a community whose strength comes from its people. So when one of us gets hurt, we all feel it to a degree. This is why at Webb Stokes and Sparks, fighting for the injured is what we do. When you're injured, there's someone at an insurance company whose job is to minimize your injury and save their corporation money. To them, you're just a number. They have a team working for them. You should too. Put our team to work for you. It's your injury. Let us make it our fight. Call Webb Stokes and Sparks today. With the BudgetBlind Smart Home Collection, you can program your smart window treatments to perfectly fit your schedule and lifestyle. Whether you're home or away, your motorized window treatments can adjust to light and temperature to keep energy costs down or close automatically at set times for better security and privacy. Plus, our app means that no matter where you are, smarter window treatments can give you peace of mind. Budget Blinds, style and service for every budget. Come visit our new location at 1953 Austin Street. Welcome back to KSAN's Inside the Game Week 6 edition. As promised, let's now tackle some six-man action starting in Robert Lee where the Steers played host to the Bront Longhorns in an all Contra Valley showdown. Robert Lee narrowly holding the all-time edge in this long-time series, 49-48 and 1. First quarter action, 2.34 to go, Steers already up 8-0, but their lethal offense strikes again. Running back Jackson Tavares punches it across, 14-0 Robert Lee. Bront trying to get on the board, but Robert Lee says, no way. Joel Pena loses his footing and gets stopped inside the five-yard line. Second quarter, 6.48 to be precise. Tavares pitches it to this time to Brenner Sherwood, who goes all the way in for the touchdown, make it 22-0 steers. The dominance would continue throughout the remainder of this one, Bront only managing to score eight on the night. Final score, Robert Lee 54, Bront 8. Erion County facing May for the fifth straight year. May, but May came in holding the all-time series lead at 3-1 and, and coming in undefeated at 5-0 this season. Erion County desperately needed to bounce back after last week's humiliating 53-6 home loss. Tonight, unfortunately, not much different for the Hornets. Score at last check, 78-36, May in the fourth quarter. We said it last week, we might as well say it again. No six-man team entered week six hotter than the very best Falcons, who came in tonight averaging a whopping 68 points per game. The Falcons hosting the New Aces Canyon Panthers Friday night, first meeting since 2018 and only the second meeting all time. 3.23 remaining in the first quarter. AC not TV dot pitches it to who else? Bryce Martin who cuts to his left and tiptoes into the end zone to draw first blood. 8-0 Falcons. Second quarter, Hunter Tucker taking it to the house. Now 15-0 Verabest as the Falcons continue to rack up points like we've seen all of the past month. Third quarter now, Falcons in cruise control. Defense also making an impact as Colton Schwartz picks up this fumble and returns it for six. Now 23-0 in favor of the home team. Verabest showing no mercy though. It's Tucker again who gets the handoff and just walks into the end zone. 30 to nothing Falcons. Verabest celebrates its homecoming with another big win. Final score tonight, 54 to nothing. Water Valley traveling to Rankin, taking on the Red Devils. Rankin holding the all-time series lead at 15 and five. However, things changed tonight. Week six marked the first meeting between these two since 2017, but head coach Aaron Whit Whitmire and Water Valley win by a final score of 59 to 14 on the road, winning back-to-back -back games for the first time all season. Baird visiting Eden on Thursday night. The Bears held the all-time advantage coming into tonight, into that night, leading the rivalry 4-2 all-time. This season, these squads are evenly matched. The Bears came in 4-1 this season, while the Bulldogs were 3-2. This one turned out to be a pretty high-scoring affair, with the Bulldogs sending the home crowd happy with a win, 44-42. The Menard Yellow Jackets brought a three-game winning streak into Week 6, outscoring opponents 144-25 to in those games combined. Tonight, Menard was scheduled to host the Laredo St. Augustine Knights. This marked the first ever meeting between these schools. Now, unfortunately, no scores available for us at the moment between these squads. We'll have more information later. Another Thursday night matchup saw the Paint Rock Indians head to Stevensville to face the three-way Braves. This one was never close. Paint Rock gets blown out 53-6, still searching for its first win of the season, now falling to 0-5. Lastly, we conclude week six, six-man coverage with a preview of Saturday night's game as the Blackwell Hornets host the Panther Creek Panthers. Both teams are desperately searching for their first win, especially Panther Creek, which hopes to put at least some points on the board for the first time this season. Kickoff is at 7.30 at Hornet Stadium.
We have one final break, so don't leave your seat just yet. We've got one more big segment coming up, including a look ahead to week seven. All that next after these messages. Shannon Medical wants to make safeguarding your health easy and convenient. We're offering a drive through flu shot clinic at the Shannon South Campus. Don't let the flu catch you. Roll in, roll up your sleeve, and roll out prepared for flu season. On a hyped up Fansville by Dr. Pepper. All aboard the hype train. We're going all the way. Woo! I heard this hype train runs an ice cold Dr. Pepper. And the hopes of overly optimistic fans. Hey guys, check out my new tattoo. We're so winning it all. And even the national media agrees. And they're never wrong about anything. Oh wait, our quarterback got injured in practice. Okay, everyone off the hype train. Oh, that didn't last long. College football, it's a pepper thing. Shannon Medical wants to make safeguarding your health easy and convenient. We're offering a drive through flu shot clinic at the Shannon South Campus. Don't let the flu catch you. Roll in, roll up your sleeve, and roll out prepared for flu season. Week six is nearly in the books, but looking ahead to week seven, it's hard to believe we reached the midway point of the season already. Wow. Next week, there are several games to mark on your calendars. Starting with Central taking on Midland Legacy on the road. Head coach Mark Smith and Central seemingly have found their identity this season after a brutal 0-2 start. Now 3-2 coming off their bye week, looking to extend that winning streak to four. Brownfield taking on Lakeview at San Angelo Stadium. Lakeview coming home for the first time in nearly a month, looking to get back in the win column after falling short three straight times on the road. Wall continuing its momentum, looking to do the exact same pick up another win next week. And Merkel, Craig Slaughter, and the Hawks are rolling. And finally, Miles coming off its bye week, traveling to Albany. Miles hoping to give star running back Tevin Mead some time off to recover from his lower leg injury. We'll see how that plays a role in that game. It should be a good one. So stay tuned. We have a lot of good coverage next week. That's all for Inside the Game. Thanks for joining us as always. And of course, have a good night. Catering for Inside the Game is provided by Chick-fil-A. Inside the Game is sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group.